All right. Well, the Dallas Cowboys did get another win, bouncing back after a infuriating loss to the Minnesota Vikings at the very end of the game last week. They bounce back and get a win in their noon game against the Detroit Lions. Now, the Cowboys had some advantages coming into this game. For one, there was no Matt Stafford. He's still dealing with a back injury. It's unclear on whether or not he'll even play the rest of the year, it sounds like, for Detroit. But that's their own problem. So, Dallas had a break here. Had a, had a chance to make some serious headway. And kind of kept doing Dallas Cowboys things from this season. Along the way, the Cowboys pretty much let Jeff Driscoll. He didn't have big yardage, but Jeff Driscoll gave them fits. If you're asking who's Jeff Driscoll, you're right to ask because the Cowboys pretty much made him look like a competent starting level quarterback on Sunday. Making matters worse, the Lions running back that did some damage was last year's seventh round pick by the Dallas Cowboys out of Alabama, Bo Scarborough. Now, Scarborough was on the Cowboys practice squad, and then he was on the Lions practice squad. The Lions the Lions are not a good team right now. Like, they've been competitive in some games this year, for sure. But they're not a team that should have given us any trouble at all. They're a terrible pass defense, a terrible pass offense. They can't run the ball to save their lives overall on the season. And Stafford, who was having probably the best year of his career, now has been dealing with this injury. Well, that didn't stop you from letting Jeff Driscoll go 15 of 26, 209 yards, and two touchdowns. Now, the Lions had seven plays of 20 or more yards. That is way too many. Those are the explosive plays that we talk about. So the fact that the Cowboys were giving those out is pretty egregious. Like, you have, I want to say, 10 plays where the Lions racked up 200 yards of offense, and then the other 50 plays, the Lions racked up only 110 yards of offense. So do the math in that regard. The Cowboys defense, they held them to 300-something yards, like in the low 300s in terms of total offense for the game. Good. That's a good defensive performance. But they didn't force any turnovers. I know, shocker, continuing with that trend. They also... Uh, Gave up the ball in their own territory on the first drive. The Cowboys still offensively start slow. They can't get out of their own way. Zeke on the first series uh, fumbles it, and the Lions are set up. Go right down the short field. I think he fumbled it at at Dallas' own 30. And the Lions go right down the short field and score. So Dallas trails 7-0 early on. Cowboys then come back out and pretty much go 3-0. and And you're just looking at this like, dude. Like, what is happening right now? Eventually, the offense does settle in. And like I said, the defense, they showed flashes. There there were moments where uh, you had Jalen Smith freaking murdering the running back in the backfield. It wasn't Scarborough in that case, I don't think. It was uh, McKissick is uh, who he laid out, I want to say, on that play. But you had a lot of plays like that. You had great pass rush from Robert Quinn, untouched around the edge for one of the three sacks of the day on uh, Driscoll. And, yeah, there there was a lot going on there. But they just couldn't keep anything consistent. It was like they were going to do one of two things. Either they were bas- basically going to force you into a three and out, or they were going to let you march right down the field and do something. And to give up 27 to Detroit when you're playing a backup quarterback and a, what, third string running back, is pretty abysmal. Like it, it's pretty embarrassing. This team, this team screams mediocre. They really do. Um, Zeke, as you can see on the board there behind me, not a factor either. Sixteen carries. I mean, not in the way he's a good running back right now. He's not playing up to the par of what we're paying him now. Sixteen rushes, forty-five yards. That's ho hum. He does get a touchdown on the ground. I mentioned his fumble loss at the start of the game that put Dallas behind the eight ball right out of the blocks. Uh, also had two receptions for 28 yards and a touchdown that on a nifty check down, uh, a screen pass, um, that he rushes into the end zone. And then you get him kind of doing the Dak warm up dance and everything in the end zone for his celebration. That was kind of entertaining, but this team, this team goes as Dak Prescott does, because if you look, Zeke is your premier running back. 
So the fact that he can give you some some damage as well uh, regarding his ability to catch the ball is nice, but you're paying him for his rushing ability. 16 for 45 is not a big day for Zeke by any means. Likewise, Amari Cooper, three catches for 38 yards. Now, don't get me wrong, both of them are critical to Dallas' success because even if they're just on the field, they're at least drawing attention. That allowed Dak to have a career day. Dak Prescott, 29 of 46, 444 yards. It is the third time this year Dak has thrown for at least 400 yards. That is second, I think it's second most in NFL history for a season. He is one behind the leader on that. So it's bonkers what Dak is doing right now. We still got six games left. The fact that Dak isn't getting more MVP buzz, I just assume it's because the Cowboys as a team have disappointed at six and four now. But Dak has absolutely played out. Now, I'm not saying he should be ahead of Russell Wilson. I'm just saying the fact that he's like, if you look at MVP discussions around the league, he's like the 12th name on that list. That's ridiculous. He should be in the top five, probably top three. But Dak, in this case, this is uh, on Twitter, at NFL 345. Dak's four games with 375 passing yards and two-plus touchdown passes this season are tied for second most in a single season in NFL history. Only Peyton Manning, with six in 2013, had more. Now, again, that's 375 passing yards, not 400. So the stat gets a little bit different in that regard for the one I mentioned earlier. Dak tied Joe Montana with four. He had four in 1990. So Dak ties uh, a career benchmark for Joe Montana. Not bad. Not bad when you can do that. And uh, he's the only Cowboys quarterback in franchise history to have at least 3,000 passing yards through 10 games. Dak is on pace to throw for over 5,000 yards this season. Seventh most. In fact, right now, if his pace, if he keeps up his pace, it'll be the seventh most passing yards in a single season in NFL history. Dak. So can we... You don't hear many of these people anymore, but there are still some out there. Can we get over this notion that Dak's not not headed towards an elite quarterback? This has been a career year for Dak. Now, I'll be fair. I'm not going to fully bite the bullet on this until we see it again. Because Carson Wentz, uh, the year he tore his ACL and Foles takes them to the Super Bowl, that year... That was the outlier for Carson Wentz. He looked like a phenomenal franchise-defining quarterback. He has not been that dude since. Now, he's had injuries. You know, again, I mentioned the the torn ACL he had. I mentioned uh, in, you know, obviously previous streams, he's had back injuries and broken uh, vertebrae and all that in his back. So, yeah, he's had injuries. But you do have an outlier year. You can have a good player play great for a year. Now, what you need to see is if he can stack these together. We haven't seen that with Dak, but there's a lot of different factors to consider here, obviously, when you're talking about a new offensive coordinator and uh, just a new passing game in general, like the weapons he has now. What he's been, the way I kind of look at it is what he was once you added Amari Cooper last year. If you go back to that, his numbers are ridiculous. His last 16 starts dating back to last season. This is Marcus Mosier on Twitter. This compares... Jared Goff, Carson Wentz, and Dak because, hey, the three premier quarterbacks out of that draft, even though Dak in the fourth round kind of had to force his way into that conversation. Completion percentage, 60.13% for Goff, 63.93% for Wentz. Dak, 69.29%. Passing yards, 43.37 for Wentz, or excuse me, for Goff, 38.46 for Wentz. 49-68 49-68 for Dak. Dak leading both by at least 600 yards. Uh, six percentage points over Wentz in the completion percentage and over Wentz, uh, 1,100 yards in the last 16 games. Yards per attempt, I hear you say. Dink and dunk Dak, right? That's the criticism. 7.2 yards per attempt for Goff. 7.01 for Wentz. 8.48 for Dak. Passing touchdowns, 21 for Wentz. 27, excuse me, I keep saying Wentz first. 21 for Goff, 27 for Wentz, 32 for Dak. Yeah. Interceptions, 16 for Goff, uh, 10 for Wentz, 12 for Dak. 
Rushing yards, 45 for Goff, 193 for Wentz, 237 for Dak. Touchdowns, 4 for Goff, 1 for Wentz, 5 for Dak. Passer rating, 82.8% for Goff, 93.4% for Wentz, 104.8 for Dak. And in the last three games alone, Dak has touchdown passes of 42 yards, 15 yards, 45 yards, 33 yards, 22 yards, 21 yards, 19 yards, and 17 yards. In the last two games, he's thrown for over 840 yards. I believe it's 848 yards in the last two games combined. You get a 397, then you get a 444. You're going to push that number up there. So, yeah, Dak is balling out right now. And there's a reason. Dallas, you can say, hey, they kind of learned their lesson a little bit from the the Vikings game at the end where they took the ball out of his hands and they said, hey, uh, I'm not so sure about this defense. Let's try and bleed the clock and let's go back to our identity, which is to say, put the ball in Zeke's hands. Well, that bit them in the ass against Minnesota. And it's just, it, it's just a frustrating factor for Dallas because – Yes, they put the ball in Dallas or in Dak's hands in this game. They let him really just run this thing out. They let him throw a lot more. Obviously, 46 attempts is, I don't know if it's his career high, but it's right there along those lines. But he shredded him. He shredded him in a game in which Zeke had 45 yards and Amari had 38 yards. He shredded them because Gallup, career day, nine catches, 148 yards. Uh, yes, uh, yeah. Sunday's game was the one-year anniversary of his brother's death. You know, he found out in the Atlanta game last year, so he dedicated that game to him. We found out after, uh, which was really cool for him. Also got his slot receiver, Cobb, going four catches, 115 yards, and hey, the rare touchdown for Cobb. Dallas's offense, when you let Dak sling it, looks good, moves the ball. They don't bog down and get themselves stuck in third down six times just trying to move the ball up and down the field. When you let Dak throw it on first down, when you let him throw it pretty consistently, it's resulted in good things throughout this year. As a team, yes, they've been wildly inconsistent. They've lost, what, four of their last seven games. But when you put the ball in Dak's hands and you don't take it from him. Zeke is not playing at that elite level this year. He's playing at a very good, or in some cases, just okay level, depending on the game. But Dak has been pretty consistent. He's had a couple games where he wasn't great. But when you let Dak carry this team right now, it's taking you into good places. So I don't know what to say about the defense. Uh, It's a train wreck for me, the defense is. I need to see what the offense can do Keep the ball in Dak's hands. Let him continue to build up. Because now, yes, Philadelphia got beat by the Patriots. So you had a full game lead on Philadelphia. And, of course, you're 4-0 in the NFC East. Uh, They've already lost to you. The Eagles have. So you've got an advantage there. But there's no wild card consideration for the Cowboys. It's NFC East champions to get into the playoffs or nothing. And the defense, I'm deeply concerned about it. It's... It's very inconsistent, right? Because I'm a numbers guy. I'm a stats guy. But at the same time, I'll acknowledge that without context, some stats are borderline meaningless. For example, the Cowboys are the Cowboys defense is seventh in total yards this year. Top seven. And I mentioned earlier, hey, 10 plays got the Lions. Those explosive plays got them like 200 plus yards. But then the other 50 plays of the game, they only managed 110 yards. Dude, like that's inconsistency. At times, the Cowboys look like they're, the defense looks like they're focused. The linebackers play up to par. Van Der Esch has regressed this year, certainly. Sean Lee has, you know, still shown he can be the old Sean Lee, which is good. But you still have to be very careful with him. Jalen, at times, looks like he knows exactly what he's doing, and he's seeking to destroy Predator out there. Other times, not so much. There are times when the linebackers don't look like they want to tackle, which is strange for a physical group, but it is what it is. Um... It, it's frustrating. A lot of unnecessary penalties. I don't know how many times Michael Bennett has lined up offsides or in the neutral zone in this game or in this short stint he's had with the Cowboys, but it's already like five times it feels like. So he's going to have to improve on that. The Cowboys are going to have to find some kind of consistency because they're third best in the league in terms of third down defense. Um, they're a top 10 defense in almost every important category except for uh, except for takeaways. And that's been the problem all, all season. They feast or famine. 
Like, they've had two games this year where they really were able to force turnovers and create havoc. Every other game this year, they've done nothing. They got five games this year without a turnover. You're not going to be an elite defense when you're doing that. And I don't have much faith in the Cowboys' defense to get a lot of stops right now. It kind of feels like if a team picks up a first down on them and they're, you know, they start a drive and they get a quick first down or something, it's almost like, ah, oh, hell, here we go again. You know, they're going to they're gonna drive the ball down the field for a while and you have to hope either the opposing offense slips up or that the defense um, eventually gets back on its feet because it's been that wildly inconsistent. And, you know, you got you got a situation here where against Driscoll, man, they let Driscoll go eight carries for 51 yards and a touchdown against them. Like, dude, you knew he can't he doesn't have a great arm. He can't. Now, he, he kept beating him for explosive plays where he'd get 20 or 30 yards. He got that several times on him, but he can't consistently beat you down the field. The only thing he really brings is that mobility. And you let him run all over you at one point. Scarborough, 14 carries for 55 yards and a touchdown as well. Like, I get it. I get it. Like, you look at it and you say, the defense should be better than this. They should. They are wildly inconsistent. And that's why you look at it and you say, hey, they're in the top 10 in a lot of these important categories. Well, they're failing the eyeball test. And they'll tell you they're failing the eyeball test. They're, they don't make any bones about oh, well, we we executed well, you know, we did enough to get this win. No, they know that it was Dak and the offense that took care of it. Zeke knows that as well. I, I had a couple things that I posted uh, comments from Zeke. I put a couple of those uh, quotables together for, for this week. You got Zeke talking about Dak after the game says, quote, Dak is playing the best football I have ever seen him play. He definitely took his game to the next level. Just the things he has been able to do. Come up to the line, change plays, getting us in the right plays versus certain looks. Uh, also, another one here from him talking about Dak to another. Dak in the offense really talking about him to another reporter says, something is clicking there and he's throwing the shit out of the ball. We've got a bunch of weapons on the on the outside he can throw to and it's hard for defenses to stop him. So keep that thing rolling. Dak has elevated his game. He is the one thing. Dak and the receivers are really the one thing that are that is making this team a potential playoff team this year. Because it's not Zeke. They're not carried on the back of Zeke like they have been in the past. And, you know, that is what it is. got to hope that Zeke's going to either wake up at some point or that he'll at least be better moving forward, you know, with this new monster deal he got. As for Dak... He's looking to get paid, and I understand the Cowboys are insisting that they're not fluctuating his his offer numbers week by week. You don't got to look week by week, but at this point, you're looking through 10 weeks of this season, and he's leading the NFL in passing yards. Dak Prescott is leading the league in passing yards. And if you look at the stats, he should be in the top three in the MVP discussion. He's like the number two QBR, I think is what I saw. In fact, I think he passed Wilson uh, after this past week. So there, there's a lot of stuff you should look at for why Dak is like making himself a lot of money here. So the Cowboys saying, ah, oh, we got our number in mind. None of this really changes anything. You can keep telling yourself that, but as his resume gets more and more impressive and he takes these substantial steps forward compared to what he was doing in years one through three, you're going to have to start considering the fact that yeah, he's going to demand more money than he would have had you signed him at the start of the offseason, this past offseason, where he's going to end up in getting this deal. You're going to have to pay him more. Or you could franchise him. I guess you could do that. I mean, there's been a lot of discussion of that being the case because there hasn't been a lot of movement in the recent weeks of the season. I personally thought he was going to be signed by week three or four this year. I was wrong about that. But if they want to franchise him, I mean, they can, but it's going to just make that number go up even more the following year because I don't think this is a fluke with Dak. I don't like, I understand that you have to see it together, but the difference between Wentz is one stellar year before his injury, which by the way, there's always an injury with Wentz. The one big difference for Wentz in that sense compared to Dak right now is that Wentz, you saw it in one contained year. That's it. With Dak, you had what the final nine games of last year, plus two playoff games, 
and now you've had 10 games of this year. The sample size spans two seasons, spans changes to the offense and the, uh, the personnel and everything like that. And there's just more there. There's more there there with what Dak is doing right now than what Wentz did with Philadelphia in the year that they won the Super Bowl. He was a big part of that season for Philadelphia until Foles came in and actually did the job for him because Wentz still hasn't even played in a playoff game. The only years Philadelphia has been good enough to go, he's been lost for the year due to injury. Go figure. It's just, it is what it is, man. The Cowboys have a lot they have to figure out. This defense is frustrating. Zeke continues to be frustrating. When they give Pollard the ball and actually let him contribute, the offense looks better. Like, Pollard actually got, what, 15 snaps in this game, and he made an impact. I mean, you see it. He's got better burst than Zeke. Big game James and I have been saying for a while, Zeke does not have that burst anymore. He is a he is a bulldozer back at this point, and he doesn't even break tackles at doing that. He's not the home run hit that he used to be as a rookie. You haven't seen that hardly at all since then. I, I have a hard time remembering the last time Zeke broke off a 30 or 40 yard run. Oh, but I hear you say that's just because they know he's so good. So they're stacking the box against him. You don't think that that's been the case in the past when you're talking about other dominant running backs like Adrian Peterson or Chris Johnson or hell DeMarco Murray could break those off every now and then. And then you look at what the offense is doing with Dak throwing the ball. You're taking these guys off of their game. You're putting them back on their heels, trying to guard against Amari Cooper and Dak and Michael Gallup breaking out and all that. They're having to do that. And yet Zeke can't make, he, he gets in these situations. He can't make one guy miss. Pollard has better burst right now than Zeke. Just literally look at the tape. Pollard in this game, four catches for 44 yards and a touchdown along a 21 also had two carries for 12 yards. Still want to see him get more rushing attempts in that regard, but you notice him. He converted a two-point conversion for Dallas late in the game as well. Um, just burst right up the middle um, for the conversion. So there's a lot there. The offense has playmakers and weapons. You just have to hope that Zeke wakes up and that the coaching staff continues to keep the ball in Dak's hands and trust him because Dak... He had a couple passes in this game that could have been potentially intercepted. You're going to have that. When you throw 46 times and you're dealing with pressure at times. Now, there were times Dak sat back there and he could have written a book and published it before the Lions got pressure on him. But there were other times Detroit blitzed way more Sunday than they have uh, on average in the season. They, in fact, I think are one of the bottom three teams in the league in terms of blitz percentage. They they knocked that number way up against Dak trying to get pressure on him. And at times they did. They only sacked him once, but they hit him a lot more. That's not a quick stat I can reference here, but they hit Dak a lot more in this game. In fact, they knocked Lyle Collins out of the game by uh, hitting Dak as he threw the ball and tackling him into the back of Lyle's legs. So we'll see what the word is on Lyle Collins. Uh, I hope he's good because even though I was critical of him getting his contract extension earlier this year, I'll be damned if he hasn't turned into one of the best right tackles in football this season. So I hope I hope uh, he's good to go. Obviously, the Cowboys are going to have a big challenge now this next week dealing with the Patriots. And unfortunately, whereas the Eagles got New England at home, Dallas has to go get New England on the road. That's going to be tough. If you look at the numbers purely, it, it looks like it's doable for Dallas, even though New England is the number one rated defense. Um it's coaching though, man, it's coaching. And I, I'm not going to get over that. You're asking me to be optimistic in a game where Jason Garrett might have to go be the difference in out coaching Bill Belichick, dude, <laughs> dude. Yeah. I, I don't have super high hope about that. Dallas is either going to have to get crazy creative with its play calling, or it's going to have to have yet another one of these monster games from Dak because Dallas doesn't have a whole lot of leeway. At 6-4, and four, you can conceivably afford to lose two more games and still win the division, I would say. Obviously, your 4-0 and right now in the NFC East has a huge advantage. Weeks 16 and 17 of the year, you go to Philadelphia. And then, I believe, home against the Redskins. Yeah, home against the Redskins to close out the year. They're a train wreck, the Redskins are. So you have a chance to sweep, potentially, your division, and that's going to artificially prop you up. I understand that. The Cowboys have not beaten the winning teams this year. The Lions were a three-win team, three, five, and one coming into this game. I understand that. It is what it is, but there is only one path in, 
you don't have time at this point to argue style points or anything like that. The only thing you can do is try to beat the teams that are there in front of you. It doesn't matter if you've been propped up by a weak schedule to this point. It gets real, and just like you had to do last year when you won something like seven of your final eight regular season games to overcome a 3-5 and five start and still make the playoffs, you're basically going to have to do something like that again this year. You have a little more leeway, obviously, at 6-4, and four, or, I mean, if you want to dial back two games, you know, take off a win and a loss there uh, at 5-3. and three, It's the inverse, but you had a little more leeway, but... With this schedule, it's it's brutal the rest of the way for Dallas. You're going to have to overcome that because, as I mentioned, you got to go to Philadelphia. Real quick run through this. Then you got to come back home to deal with the Bills and Cole Beasley. Bills are another very, very good defense. Uh, you go to the Bears, which doesn't look as, as tedious now, especially with Trubisky getting benched. Who knows what you'll be looking at there. Probably still Trubisky. They'll probably have to go back to him because, I mean, what are you going to do, Chase Daniel? Uh, Then you got the Rams at home. Rams are another up-and-down team this year. Two Philadelphia will be a real difficult challenge. And uh, like I said, Redskins. So we'll see what Dallas does. If if you were looking for this game for Dallas against the Lions, it's like, hey, let's go out there and let's let's show that we're we're awake. let's, Let's make a statement in this victory. You didn't get a statement. The closest thing to a statement you got is like, all right, can we shut up about Dak not being a legit quarterback finally? That's the only statement you got. That's it. Like, as a team, you look at the Cowboys and you're like, all right, you know there's been years where you've largely had to have Aaron Rodgers or Drew Brees or, hell, um, you know, for a while there, it was even the case with Brady, where, all right, you got a good team, but you don't have a great team in terms of how they're performing on the year. You have to rely on that quarterback to kind of drag them there. And I Obviously, that's not the case with Brady at this point, but in in general, that's what you would look at. People said Dak couldn't do that. He might have to do that this year because the run game is not what it was. Zeke has not looked to me the same as who he was two years ago. Hell, last year, Zeke, I thought, was more explosive than this. So we'll see. Um, I, I'm still optimistic about Zeke getting things back on track. Hopefully, if not this season, then at least beyond this year. But uh, you're going to have to really see now what you can get with Dak because he's he's good, man. He can sling it. And I'm, I'm convinced it's not fool's gold with Dak, but we'll see, man. That's all my time, though. Uh, if you like this video, don't forget to thumbs up, share, subscribe, all that. I've been DDP. This is the Dallas Prospect. And until next time, remember, every legend was once a prospect. Salute.